Hi, I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to Out of the Ether, a spin-off format from Out of the Trenches. Now here's the thing. On both the YouTube channel page and on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, a lot of you viewers write us really amazing comments just full of incredible information and things that we didn't know or things that we haven't had time to share. So we're starting this new format, Out of the Ether, you know, like radio, Out of the Ether, so I can sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and read some of our favorite comments from you guys. Okay, about food on the front line. Bill Allen writes, Hi Indy, great channel. Your updates are something I look forward to every week. On the topic of food and personal anecdotes, my grandfather, William Musgrave, was in the Stokes Trench Mortar Platoon of the 112th American Infantry. He told that during the Argonne Offensive, they were advancing so fast that they had little time for meals for several days. They then pushed through what had been just moments before a German encampment and found a meal still sitting on the tables, still hot. He said that this day they stopped advancing long enough to sit down to what he felt at the time was one of the best meals he had ever eaten. This is fun. About Cadorna, uh, Cadorna being Italian Army Chief of Staff Luigi Cadorna. Uh, Mr. Opelulo writes, Cadorna was an idiot, but sadly, he was not the only one. All the Italian high command was composed of aristocratic buffoons with political and press contacts whose hubris was surpassed only by their ignorance. No one understood how modern wars should have been fought. All their inspiration was based, again, on quoting and not understanding the Roman Empire. In a mountain war, there was a preapic fixation with conquering the mountain tops. Tactics like encirclement, combined arms, or even preparing bombardment were considered as vile and dishonorable in their crooked minds. The insuccesses, I guess unsuccesses or lack of success, were caused not by their idiotic strategies, but by the lack of courage of the soldiers. This escalated to grotesque levels when the Italian army reintroduced the decimation in 1916. And I hope Indy will dedicate a special to the barbaric conditions and laws inside the Italian army so that these ignorant people in the comments that still defend their memories will finally shut up. Wow. Okay, I love this new format. This is brilliant. Keep, them going. Keep it going, keep it going. Okay, okay, and yeah, and by the way, I welcome all of your comments on these comments, okay? Um, about cocaine in Russia, Dr. Gunn writes, When I was in college, late 50s, early 60s, my Russian professor, who grew up in St. Petersburg during World War I, told the class that cocaine was legal in Russia at the time and was available at apothecaries, pharmacies. Uh, she said she, and other college students, used cocaine regularly to stay awake to study for exams. Morphine, too, to relax after exams. Okay, makes sense. Her first bow was killed as an infantry lieutenant fighting the Austrians. She was fascinating to listen to. I love stories like that. That's great. I love stories about people's relatives or professors or things that fought in the war so you get a personal touch of, you know, how things were in general in living conditions in society at the time. However, please write in all of your comments on these comments and please write in some more fantastic loads of informational highly opinionated comments for me to do another exciting episode of Out of the Ether. Let us know what you think about this new format idea in general. And if you want to see more or want to learn more about cocaine use during the First World War, you can click on the Out of the Trenches episode where we talked about that right here. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.